I put the camera into position and gave Rick the thumbs up. Enjoy guys, because I'm gonna close my eyes now and pretend that this never actually happened. Appalachian sunrise meets my skin. Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in. Golden, golden. I'll follow only golden. A little bag of adapters which allows us to fill up our LPG tank. So Rick's just about to go ahead and fill us up because we're on the red. Should. These aren't always the easiest things no. to fathom. Easy as pie. For some reason, ours always makes this weird noise. Oh, it's a horrible noise. It's a horrible noise. What is it? One, one, one year and three, but... <laughs> <laughs> nice, smooth. <laughs> Here the Ebro Delta, so let's go and see what birds we can find today. The big one we're looking for are the flamingos, which we're pretty excited about. And it wasn't long before a flamboyance of flamingos appeared overhead. And no, I didn't make that one up. A flock of flamingos is genuinely called a flamboyance. So we have been to see these flamingos before. We came here in 2019 when we did our first motorhome tour. It was warmer then because it was the height of summer, so this is a little bit different for us. Uh, but it's really cool. The, apparently the flamingos are here all year round. Um, obviously this is the second time that we've seen them here, different times of year too. Uh, and we're able to just park, you'll just see, like you can park so close to actually the hides here. So um, we'll have to let you guys know maybe in the description below the place to come and to park your van. Not overnight, but just so you can nip out and come and see the flamingos because it's pretty cool. Come down to remind you of before We can fly away from here We can stay close, my dear Swept up in the way from all our fears How are we supposed to know on our own together? Right, so we've managed to ID Oh, uh, well, I did flamingos. Flamingos, we got that one. Right? Flamingos, yeah, yeah. They're the pink big ones. <laughs> no, we've seen them. We saw, uh, what did we see? We saw a marsh harrier. Right, Where else yeah. did we see Pip? Uh, gull? Any, a gull. Sea yeah, seagull, a gull. Yeah, seagull, yeah. Seagull, yeah. Seagull, yeah. <laughs> uh, saw igrets. Some igrets, some little igrets, and uh, a species of ibis, or ibis, ibis, I think they are. Is it glossy ibis or something like that? But it's really quite nice. Loads of flamingos, they're just quite far away. And unfortunately, our camera doesn't have to be zoom for us to get right into the No, it doesn't. It'd be wicked to actually get like a really close up shot, but even the binoculars, you can, you can obviously see them, but not in major detail unless they're really close. But it's just about finding places. Like over here, they're, crew, they're quite close. None of this used to be here 4,000 years ago. That's what, that's what I find crazy. Yeah, All of this here is just sediment from the river Ebro. So over 4,000 years, mainly in the 14th and 15th centuries where they did a load of uh, logging uh, for timber, for shipbuilding, all of this sediment has, has come down and basically washed out and created this delta. Which uh, now is used, obviously it's, there's a lot of bird life here, but there's also a lot of growing agriculture. There's a lot of, there's, there's so it's, it's, it's a bird haven because there's rice paddy fields, which is shallow, um, there's farming, other bits of farming, and then there's all these little, uh, whatever you want to call them, inland in bits of uh, lagoons, which is really cool. It's a really nice place. Right, 
Right, so we just found ourselves driving on a beach now. If you've been following us for a while now, you might just remember that time back in Denmark last year where we got stuck on Romo Beach. Wasn't great. We did have some help, luckily. We haven't got any help this time with us, so hopefully it doesn't happen again and we can get back off it. But this smile here was not to last. You see, Rick had this ingenious idea that we would put the camera on the ground and drive over it to create a pretty cool transition. So I put the camera into position and gave Rick the thumbs up. Enjoy guys, because I'm gonna close my eyes now and pretend that this never actually happened. Her aging face. That's the face I just got. Yeah, well and truly deserved because that was. that wasn't good. Like this. It was a costly mistake. I, I, I had faith in you when you said, oh, it's, there's enough clearance. It turns out that there wasn't enough clearance. There really wasn't enough clearance. <laughs> no, there wasn't. Just, just a big crunch. Yeah. It's just material things. You're reading a book about simplicity. <laughs> oh, the nurse lady is the right term. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, you're reading a book about simplicity, like materialistic. Yeah. This was a test. It was not a test. Simplicity doesn't mean breaking expensive equipment and yeah, then spending don't. all that money again on expensive equipment. I know, it's terrible. We're going to have to sell one of the children now. I'm just going to show you the camera and what it actually looks like. If you just have a look here, this top bit is all dented in and you'll see like the lens, it's just been pushed that way so now it's all bent. Which means that it doesn't actually close, it still turns on so that's good. But it just wants to power off again. So it's pretty kaput really, so we're just going to see, not feeling very hopeful, if there's any way it can be replaced. But if not, then it's a new camera job. So we are looking at 800 pound maybe for a new camera. Good times. So this is an expensive uh, mistake. So um, we might have to set up an advert for one of those, uh, if you can spare three pounds a month to help me buy a camera. <laughs> So yesterday, uh, not only did I break the camera, which um, didn't go down too well, but I was sitting having me a cup of tea and I noticed something much more dangerous, really. Um, I noticed that the buckle, despite us having a recent MOT, they obviously don't check these things, um, but our buckle here, the receiver, is completely come off. So it's a wire buckle, it's come completely off. It's just a spare part, so I've ordered a couple uh, new ones. So I've ordered a couple new ones from the UK, so I'm hoping they're going to be delivered to a campsite that we're going to be going to, and then I'll just swap them over. But uh, I would never even think of checking these. So if you've got a van or anything like that, just give them a check, because that's pretty dangerous. So it's not good. We have one seat that isn't usable right now. Yeah. So in all times of crisis, the first thing you do is eat cake, right or wrong? One piece of cake. Oh, look at them all. <laughs> a lot of vultures, isn't they? And then two, yeah. are left for you. two are left for me. Fantastic. No, no, no. Oh. One for me, thank this you. This one looks better. We now stopped at a campsite, hoping and praying that we can get a new camera and seat buckle receiver sent out to us. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to click like, comment, and subscribe. And finally, before we go, a quick shout out to Betty and Norman who we met in the Ebro Delta. We hope you continue to enjoy your travels. And also to Lara and Andy who are dreaming of their own van life adventures. See you next week, guys.